Welcome everyone to my very first City Skylines 2 gameplay build. In this video we'll be starting a realistic American city from scratch, featuring a busy downtown, beautiful row house districts, parks, big industrial complexes, all the classic services and to round it up an extensive tram network. Before we start, I want to thank Paradox and Colossal Lauder for this opportunity and also make it clear that this is an early beta build of the game, it's not a finished product, so keep that in mind. The map we've chosen for our very first build is Mountain Village and it is gorgeous. Just look at some of these cinematic shots that I've taken, just beautiful. The only change I've made to this map is a slight change in the starting road layout and planting a lot of trees. And if you enjoy my content, hit the like button and consider subscribing. Many thanks. Alright, we are ready to establish the city of Riverview. I know, very creative. Um, and we better get going because we've got a few guidelines from Paradox we have to follow. So the first one is we cannot progress beyond the Grand Village milestone. And the second one is this video cannot be more than 30 minutes. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge for me as well. Uh, being that we're going for a realistic American theme, uh, we're going to go with a pretty simple grid format as uh, like for our roads. It's also going to make the assets stand out a little better because we of course don't have any mods, so we'll have to zone. Happy to announce that the assets in this game look ex absolutely fantastic, but you'll get to see that in just a few moments. The first thing I'm going to do before I zone is I'm just going to frame this park in here. Trees take quite a while to grow, uh, at least in the game right now. So the trees that are already grown here, I want to turn into a bit of a, a bit of a park, really. And I'm just gonna add like a small road back here, and then we'll turn this whole thing into a park. I want downtown to be in very close vicinity to the intersection we have here to connect it all up. And the street layout, as I said, is gonna be a pretty basic grid. Something you'll notice is that there is a ton of nice flexibility in the road tooling and you can pretty much just drag roads straight through other roads and yeah, it just makes the whole uh, network placement uh, process much easier. Let's get going. Alright, we've uh, got ourselves a pretty basic grid here, the start of Riverview, and you saw me use two different roads. So I use this basic road, which has parking on either side. We all know this one from City Skylines 1, basically. And then I use this alley road throughout to create much of the suburban areas. I like this road because it's much more narrow, it has a smaller footprint, it doesn't allow for parking, which is a bit of a shame. I would have liked something in between. And then I've used roundabouts to uh, end some of these uh, nodes here. I don't have call this X available, so this is like the second next be uh, second best thing. And I think it just it looks a bit like call this X at least. And you know they love call this X in the US, so yeah, we're going with it. Anyways, this is a pretty good starting point. Pretty happy with this. As I said, the downtown core is gonna be uh, situated here around. Not Pine Street, let's just call this Bad Boy Main Street. There you go. And it crosses with Amity Street for like the center of the city. And I think that's just fine. Next up for any start of the city, we're going to have to add some utilities. And this has been made much easier and much more flexible in City Skylines 2. Very happy with this change. So as you guys probably saw in the developer diaries, we are able to tap into the uh, utilities from neighboring cities. So instead of having to build a coal power plant, for instance, of my own, which is 100,000 credits or like 25% of my current capital, I'll be able to place down a transformer station instead and then just hook up to our neighboring city's electrical grid. Of course, we'll be paying uh, We'll be paying for this but it's it's actually not too bad and you can go for a very long time before you actually want to create an electrical grid of your own 
Likewise, you can export uh, your surplus power if you do have your own electrical grid. So just place down the transformer station. I connected these big power lines to it and then we are going to draw some electrical cables and we just need to find a road network where we can place it. And there you go. We are all connected up. As you guys should know by now, uh, electricity is transferred by uh, roads, which is a very nice change. Makes it a little easier. Just going to connect this one up as well, just for aesthetic purposes, really. Looks nice. That's electricity taken care of. Water is pretty simple as well. Um, I'm going to go with the water pumping station because it has a pretty low upkeep uh, and a massive water output. Now, do remember through all of this, this is a beta build, so some of these things might be subject to change. But for now, this is my preferred solution. Just going to place that. We're going to hook it up and we are going to need road access as well. Uh, so let's just see if I can create like a, a proper road to connect it. There you go. I prefer adding a little roundabout as well. Sewage is very easy as well. We've got a sewage outlet here. Doesn't require any electricity to function and we can actually place it wherever we want. So yeah, I don't think it's advisable to place it here. But if you've got a citizen and you really just don't like him, you can place it in his backyard. Let's, uh, let's place it so it leads the sewage into water, which is obviously much better gonna do a little trick here and grab the leveling tool um then just gonna terraform this a bit so we can have the outlet all the way down here because as you guys probably saw we've got very very strong currents downstream here so i don't want to place it up here i want to place it as far downstream as i can and since i only have this one tile for now it's gonna be down here and we'll just connect this up with a sewage pipe there you go and that's it we're ready to zone so that was pretty easy huh uh zoning has received a major overhaul not gonna go too much in depth it might change but we've got more zones to pick from uh, as we uh, start progressing through these milestones and i'll show you guys when we do that but for now we can zone low density stuff so that's what we're gonna do we've got two themes available so a cool new addition is that we can zone both types of uh, architectures um uh, so what I want to do is build a commercial core with primarily North American assets in this vicinity here. So this is the park. So we are obviously going to leave that. But Amity Street and Main Street are like our uh, primary roads cutting through this area. So that's what we're going to zone up. So we'll zone down Main Street here. Probably down to about here and then we are gonna zone down Amity Street as well But of course leaving our park uh, Untouched don't want to zone that We've also got uh, Lilac Street here, which we might actually also just add a bit of zoning to So that's our start at least and then we'll fill in this area as we move along so that we have commercial surrounding much of the park here in the center Something that I like to do is actually switch to the other style than what I've done my big zone and then just go in and overwrite some of these zones to just basically create a bit more variety in the type of buildings that we'll be getting. The European buildings do look slightly uh, different, but I'm happy to say that they are still generic enough so that you can actually uh, mix them in like we're doing now. Let's just zone the uh, low density residential and then I'll show you guys another thing that I like to do. Just gonna zone the whole thing up. Give me a second. So we've now zoned the whole thing up, but there are two small things or actually three small things that I like to do before I run the simulation and let the game start. So one is I like to identify areas that have a lot of trees such as here and then I'm going to remove some of the zoning here so that the trees can actually stay and be kind of a park. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this little pavement path here and just run it through some of these blocks to kind of break them up a bit uh, and just make it make it look a little more interesting. And with that in place, 
the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing to our residential zones as I did to our commercial zones. Basically mix in some European zonage uh, throughout because once again the low density European and American assets they do uh, look different but many of them are pretty uh, generic uh, so by doing this I am going to add extra variety to all the residential areas that I grow. Now with all that in place we of course also need to do some industrial zoning uh, and something that I like to do since we don't really have keys available currently in the game not dedicated keys at least is to just make my own sort of harbor something that at least looks a bit like a harbor by just using the terrain modifying tools some roads and then placing down some um some uh, factory zoning, some industrial zoning, and I'm just gonna showcase what I mean by that. Let's grab our industrial zoning, and that's just industrial manufacturing, and it's just a big zoning type. Something to really notice when you place uh, industrial zones is the direction of the wind, and as you guys can see, it's blowing towards these big mountains, so our industry is placed uh, pretty well. Finally, I am also going to be building an industrial district out here uh, because the uh, the amount we've got by the, the port or the, the makeshift port as it is currently is not going to be enough. And we've unlocked our very first milestone, the tiny village. We've been granted 600,000 credits, one development point and three expansion permits. And if we check our progression panel, we can see what we've also unlocked. An increased loan limit we can buy additional map tiles we can check our budget our statistics and, and most importantly we can now build row houses this is an entirely new zoning type that wasn't in city skylines one and i can't wait to show you guys how it looks first up though we are just gonna finish this industrial area i'm going to hit play so we can get an actual city here and we'll see things start growing throughout the entire city, which is very nice. All right, so as you can see here from the RCR demand meter, our demand has actually shifted and we now have maximum demand for medium density residential. And we're gonna start out by zoning all American. And you've probably already guessed it. Then I am going to mix in the European stuff as well. Now, while we let things grow and settle, let's spend our development point. What I'm going to grab first is the advanced road services, because this is a feature that I am very, very hyped about, and I'm going to show you right now. So we're just going to unlock it. This off ramp here, I don't want people to be able to turn left. This is specifically a stretch of road to take if you know you're going right. And I can actually fix that by disallowing left turns. Similarly, I can go in and I can remove the crosswalk. The same here. I, I don't want there to be a, a traffic light here at all. You saw that when I remove the crosswalks, the game automatically creates a mesh, like it textures in the nodes. And that is just fantastic. I don't want the crossing here either. I mean, who's going to cross here? Yeah, I don't know. What we can also do is just we can add some planters. We can also add trees to those planters to make it all look a little better. We've also unlocked some new buildings, of course, and one of them is the cemetery. And I want to show you guys this asset because it is beautiful. So I'm just going to, I think I'm going to place it here and just look at this cemetery. I think we're going to add the chapel at how expensive it is, is this? 25k. So it's not bad for something that looks pretty sweet right here for a customized cemetery look. We also unlocked some new medium roads we can use and I'm a big fan of this four lane divided road. So if we just upgrade here, you can see we've got a beautiful median here. And of course we can use our upgrade tools here to upgrade it. So we can make the median grassy and we can of course add trees for a much more pleasant look. We've got a few residents waiting for ambulances and 
there's a bit of a problem because we don't have any ambulances in the city. So luckily this easily highlights to me that it's time to invest in some healthcare, uh, privatized healthcare, of course. Um, so we're going to have to place our clinic and we can upgrade and expand our clinic as well. I think I'm going to add it here. And that unlocks milestone two, the small village rewards us 700,000 credits two development points and four additional expansion permits. We can now alter taxation. We've got medium density housing and we've unlocked schools and high schools. I think a good spot for the school would be uh, over here. It's in a bit of a more quiet section, but it's still easily accessible from the uh, from Amity Street as well as Main Street. And let's just place it around here. It is going to remove a few houses, but I think that's fine. Let's just check the upgrades. We can add a playground. We can add expansion wings to allow for more students. And then I'm going to add the playground around here, I think. There you go. We've got a really nice elementary school in place now. And I completely forgot to show you guys the medical clinic is, of course, also upgradable. So it's got two uh things that we really care about the patient capacity and the amount of ambulances available and we can upgrade with an ambulance depot which uh adds five additional ambulances so that's an extension we can add here but we can also add an extension wing which is going to increase the patient capacity with 25 and i'm pretty certain that we can actually add multiple of these as long as there's space surrounding the building so you can really upgrade uh, your one service building quite extensively, which is fantastic, of course. All right, so two things I want to do now. First one, we are going to upzone some of our downtown to medium density apartments, which is going to be so cool and just add a bit of a skyline to our city. Next up, I'm going to use my... Actually, I should just do it now. I'm going to use my two development points to buy highways because... Highways are such a joy to build and work with in this game. Complete game changer from the predecessor. And I'm going to showcase just how easy it is in just a second. So we'll un unlock those. And then we're going to up zone our downtown with some medium density housing. And the way I'm going to zone is I'm just going to up zone some of our downtown lots. And then I'm going to try and not zone the exact same zoning as, uh, you know, a lot size each time because I want a little more variety. While we let our downtown continue to grow, we are going to put our new, oh voila, our new highways to good use. So first up, I want to just pause the, no, not pause the game. Let's let it grow. I'm going to upgrade and this off ramp here to a proper highway off ramp like so much more enjoyable to look at and we've now got our overly complex on ramp in case you don't want to drive um, 50 meters more on turn right here so it makes no sense but it looks kind of cool anyways we are finally going to spend some points buying some tiles and i'm going to buy this one because i want to do an industrial expansion out here as you guys can see we've got quite a bit of industrial demand and i'm going to use the same technique as over here to sort of build a port uh, in a very quick and dirty way It's about time we add the high school properly centered and there you go and that unlocks milestone number three large village 800,000 credits three development points and five expansion permits 
service budgets can now be adjusted fire and rescue as a development tree the same with police and administration and of course the firehouse and the police station and of course the high school is extensively upgradable as well we can add a library which looks really cool we can add an extension wing as well on the other side and last but certainly not least we can add an actual sports field out the back or on the very side of it which is, I mean, that's so awesome. And we've got the cash, so yeah, we're doing it. And I want to add at least one extension wing as well. I know I'm just splurging now. This is absolutely not necessary, but it just looks great, doesn't it? And it's been a while since we had true low density residential demand, but now's the time for more houses to be added. So we're going to add much more uh, in ways of roads up here north of the cemetery and just fill that out with residential stuff. And we are even going to sprinkle in some row houses here along Fawn Street. So it's almost like a second center or an uptown or whatever you'd you'd call it. Let's place down a fire station and a police station, the two assets we've just unlocked. And let's place the fire station out here near Main Street. That's going to give very easy access to our two big industrial areas. We'll just add it. Let's see, we've got a police station as well. And ideally, I want to place that a little more centrally. Maybe, let's see. And there you go. And there you have it, we've unlocked milestone for the Grand Village. 1 million credits, 4 development points and 6 expansion permits. So for the developments, what I want to do is open up transportation. I want to buy the trains, even though I'm not going to implement it. And then I want to buy the trams. This is a, the type of public transportation that I would like to use. Also going to go back here and buy the large roads. And we are going to implement a tram network into our town now. Something we have also unlocked with the Grand Village, as we can see in our milestones here. Higher loan limit, district creation tool, production panel, policies, natural disaster. Oh, yeah, never mind. Transportation overview and new types of zoning. Low rent housing, which are large apartment buildings with small affordable apartments and low density offices. Other modes of transportation, bus depot, taxi depot, as well as a bunch of parks. So very, very nice milestone to uh, to kind of cap out the city at for now. But we were uh, going to uh, yeah do the tram network. I've really been looking forward to this. So we're going to have to place a depot first. I want to place it here. It's a massive building. Looks really, really cool. And we've just got to connect the network. So what I'm thinking is... We need to cover all of Amity Street and we need to cover all of Main Street. And maybe we should have a line going down Fawn Street as well. We also need to make sure you can reach the uh, Riverview High School. Uh, and we need to also probably reach out to our industrial district out here. And now, instead of referring to industrial districts and stuff, we actually got our... Um, We've got a district creation tool, so I'm going to go ahead and create a bunch of districts as well. Alright, so I've named everything. Let's begin the construction of the tram network. And creating it is actually really easy. We can place these uh, tram stops and we've got uh, North American and European styles. We can place them on either side of the road and then we can place actual stops when we create it with the uh, line network. So I'm just gonna go ahead and map, up the, map out the entire line first.
All right, so I've essentially created two lines, the RTA or Riverview Transit Authority uh, green line, which primarily serves the port of Riverview connects up out here at the, uh, the high school. Uh, and then we've got the blue line, which is a much larger line that connects all of Orchard Park, Bedford Gardens, Uptown, Downtown, and all the way out to the high school. So that's the two lines we've got currently. Next up, I'm going to uh, zone with our new zoning types available. So we've got low rent housing, which are going to be primarily like tower blocks, basically. They look very, very cool. They are quite tall, so I'm going to preferably use them in like a downtown setting. Generally, this is a type of, of uh, zoning that works for both themes. They are pretty generic to look at. And of course, then we've got all low density offices and we've got very high demand for this. This is for pretty skilled workers. Uh, so I'm going to just zone that here and there. So it's not because it offers a ton of workplaces, so I'm not going to go absolutely crazy with the zoning of it. For my very last moves, I'll be buying the parking areas and I'll be implementing a bus service while adding some parking lots throughout. So first things first, we're of course going to need a depot and then mapping out the route is much the same like with the trams. All right, all right. I know I'm no expert at creating nice public transport lines and some aspects of this uh, video might have felt a bit rushed, but I wanted to build a proper city and I didn't have a ton of time and I wanted to show just from beginning to the end how I approach this just as I do with my City Skylines 1 builds. It's been so much fun. And I'll do my best to leave you guys off here with some really beautiful cinematics, uh, which have, you know, no post-processing. This is all in-game footage using the very nice uh, tool sets we have available. This thing is gorgeous. This game is gorgeous and it's a ton of fun to play. So I cannot wait to show you guys more City Skylines 2 content in the future. I don't know exact dates, um, but I'll let you guys know as soon as I do. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed these final cinematics and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.